video is going to be specific uh, regarding end grain hollowing. I get quite a bit of uh, correspondence and questions regarding the best methods. There are various methods to achieve the same result. Um, some are easier, in my view, um, than others. So I'm going to go through a few uh, tools that you can use and, and the sort of finish that you can obtain and the safer methods and the, the methods that require a little bit more con uh, sort of concentration and skill, if you like. Um, so hopefully that will answer some questions for you and you can go away, practice and decide on the one which suits your turning style the best. Um, last, in my last video, in the, in the, in the very short um, and really incomplete Harrogate report, no, nothing could really convey how, what a great weekend it was. However, there were two things that um, my old memory completely lost, lost it. I had this wonderful bolt action pen made from a hybrid blank uh, and that was given to me by somebody I couldn't remember last week but uh, since then uh, it has come to me. Um, it was my old mate Graham Light. So once again Graham thank you very much for that pen and that will be cherished and used on a very regular basis. Um, and also very important too I had a, a large pack of chocolate coated digestive biscuits given to me um, as a bit of a, a change from wood not that wood isn't appreciated believe you me but this was really appreciated given that I was virtually starved on the Friday by my hosts and um, the guy that came to my rescue unknowing at the time was Eddie Butt so thanks very much for the biscuits Eddie they were really appreciated not just by me though unfortunately um, I've also received a couple of stickers, um, one from Mark, uh, from all the way from Australia, Ham Wood Turning, and already he gave me two stickers, one's already on the board actually, uh, on the wall behind, so great looking sticker, nice design, I've got two, so if one falls off or I decide I want to put it somewhere else, I've got a spare one. Thanks for that Mark, appreciate it. And also all the way from the US of A, um, from Andrew R. Davis, a sticker for uh, redbuttonturners.ca and I really appreciate those, some really nifty little stickers there and they'll be going up in various places around the shop. Thanks very much for that Andrew, um, I really appreciate it. And uh, that ends the intro, um, a few people have told me that I rabbit on too much, well unfortunately that's me, you can always fast forward to the, uh, to the turning bit. So I'll alter the camera angle slightly and we'll go through the various methods of end grain. So what I've done here, what I've got here is a piece of old fence post, not the ideal uh, wood for doing any particular project, but very good for practicing on. I mean, there's some cracks in it, there's knots in it, um, but it's to show you the different methods of end grain hollowing. Now I've turned it around, obviously, it's about six inches out from the chuck jaws. Um, <clears throat> maybe a goblet, a box a bit long, but I'm going to go down in uh, increments to show you the different methods. Now the first thing to do is to get rid of the um, the, the, the centre wood, the slow moving wood, because that makes the job a lot easier. Now you can combine this with a depth hole as well for a predetermined depth that you wish to hollow your piece to. Now this, what I'm going to do on this particular one, I've got a 3 8 spindle gouge here, um, I've got it where it's entering on um, centre when it is horizontal and what I'm going to do is to plunge to the depth I want. Um, turning at about 1500 revs, no need to go any higher than that really. Start with the flute um, towards yourself just to get started and then plunge. Now what happens there, look, you can see I'm not on centre because I haven't got it correct. But that's not a problem, we will remove that and just make a dimple and then let's say we want to go to um, where my thumb is in depth, go in and plunge. Move out, plunge, move out, plunge, move out, plunge, move out, plunge. 
Now that's got a fair depth of hole. That's gone down to that depth, which is OK. Now, what you have to do with that is practice. And if you get it right, which I didn't quite get it right on that one, but it doesn't matter, it shows the error. You've got to get in, a, I should have been possibly a little bit lower, um, and make a starting uh, dimple there, if you like, with the skew chisel. But that doesn't matter, we've got there, we've got the depth. Now, the method of hollowing, just lower the tool rest very slightly. And um, what you're doing, is hollowing like so, and we're using just to the left of the nose of the gouge. And what you're doing is starting with the wing and just start a pivotal action. Let's do it this way so you can see it easier. It's a very effective way of removing stock. So I'll continue hollowing from the center to the edge of the piece. Using basically the tool rest as a fulcrum at this stage. When you're coming back, you can see the shavings are coming out quite nicely. And the tendency is to sort of stop there. Well, you haven't actually reached the lip. So what you need to do is keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, and almost fall off the edge. And that way you have gone right to the edge and there's no lip there. Now the other method, of course, is to do a push cut in. Now this, to me, um, can be more problematic because of skidding, etc. So what I intend to do, what I tend to do, is take a thin parting tool or any parting tool, and let's decide, for example, that the maximum, almost allowing for sanding, maximum uh, diameter you want is, let's say, there and push in. Now that gives you that gives you a guide when you're push uh, when you're cutting this way. If for example you skid, you're gonna have that shoulder as a stop. So very light cuts and I must stress as well that your tool should be sharpened to the max uh, the sharpest you can get it. So again, this is only a 3-8 spindle gouge, and we're going to take a push cut from the outer rim into the centre. Now again, starting a push cut here, just getting the cut ready, get the bevel, twist, slight, twist slightly, and like a ball almost, work your way in to the centre. like you were turning a bowl. Now when you get to the extremities, if you like, of the, the diameter you want, when you're starting on there, on the, on the lip, if you like, there is a tendency and a possibility to skid back. If you've got your, your guide depth there at the edge, it gives you something to fall back on. And you can start your cut. Same again, the back of your bevel there is on there, resting, so it can't go any further than, than, than that part of the piece to go in and push in to the middle. And then when you want to do, let's say, the final cut before sanding, This will be the final cut now. You've got that shoulder to support the bevel. And then you merely move forward, pick up the cut, twist slightly, 
So that you're cutting again, instead of with a pull cut on the left hand side of the nose, you're cutting just to the right hand side of the nose. And you don't want to engage too much of the wing, or you could get a catch. Just, just pick up the cut, nice and gently. Very slight pressure in. To the centre. Now, considering this is very uh, wide grained and very poor quality wood, not a bad surface um, straight off the tool with this method. Now, another option, I've just got rid of that end bit, another option is not to drill a depth hole and or to uh, make a depth hole, is just go in and start to hollow. So you would treat it similarly to a bowl and just pick up the cut and start to hollow. Let's just put a, a maximum diameter, let's just say it's there, just to give a guide, and you can then quite safely, without skidding, start at the um, the outer edge, similarly to as you would with a bowl, lift the handle, pick up the cut and push towards the centre. Now bearing in mind I'm only using a 3 8 spindle gouge. Now again this is where the shoulder comes into play, you've got that support and make the cut. And then for your final, let's just say where that little uh, rim is there, your final, as you would with a bowl, you have to go stretch right over um, and then ride the bevel, pick the cut and go and slightly twist the bevel as you're going. And then you've got a little um, nub, just knock him off, like so. So that is uh, another method of hollowing. Okay, I've cut that. I've cut that piece off now, and we've got a fresh piece of wood. This will be the last bit on this piece of fence post. Um, you can use the humble scraper. Now this is a half inch scraper, I've touched it up on the grinder and again make sure if you're using a standard grind scraper without any relief um, bevel at the top to make sure that your rest is in such a place that you're cutting on centre with the handle raised, slightly raised and that way you get more control. And with this you merely start in the centre to left of centre and start moving and you can you can shift quite a bit of wood. So starting at just to the left of center, start the cut and in a rocking motion working back and forth. The little nub created there is very easily removed just by plunging in.
And again, I mean, we're cutting through knots and everything here. Not a bad surface. Um, if you want to improve the surface, if you drop the tool rest slightly and use the scraper on approximately a 45 degree angle where you're slicing the fibres and just clean up the surface. Nice fine shavings coming off this really quite horrible wood. <laughs> Keeping it at 45 degrees to the end. And we should hopefully see an improved surface. Not too bad at all, as I say, considering the, the knots and everything else that we are cutting through. So that's another method. Now yet another method to use is uh, carboy tools, because a lot of beginners especially uh, tend to prefer carboy tools to get them used to the craft. Um, what I would tend to do there, I'll also show you another way of getting a depth hole with a handheld drill bit. First of all, just get your skew chisel and just make a little um, indent for the, um, the drill to be guided by. And then what I have here is a, <coughs> I, th I don't know, I'm not sure, I think it's a 10mm maybe drill bit, just to get rid of that slow moving wood in the beginning, um, in the centre. And what I've done there, I've got a very inexpensive um, keyless chuck there to hold the drill bit and I've just put a little handle on the end. Um, again, you don't need really high speed and it's best not to, like 600 revs. Now the idea of that dimple, uh, the divot there is the centre. Now you want your drill on horizontal and push. Very, very simple method of getting a depth hole. Now be wary when you do this in regard of pushing in on the horizontal because if you move off that horizontal you're going to get this sort of an action and you're going to get an off-centre hole basically so it's not going to really benefit you. So we got rid of the slow moving wood by yet another method and now I'll be using a carboid um, tool to do the hollowing out. Basically it's back hollowing the same method that we use with the spindle gouge. On this occasion I'll be just using the uh, Simon Hope Mini Hollower with a 6mm cutter. But whatever um, carbide tool you have will have the same effect. So again, turning the revs up again now to about 15-1600 revs, it's all that's necessary. You've got the tool cutting on centre when it's horizontal and just start the cut and pivot. And carry on to the depth you require. Now, to to get a nicer surface, bearing in mind, as I say, this is really awful wood. Nice and gentle, light cut, come round. I've got the cutter at approximately 45 degrees. And keep it on the same plane, bringing it all the way to your rim and out of the rim. It's not going to be a brilliant finish on this wood, I keep saying, but that is a much improved finish to the initial hogging cuts if you like. For the method of course is using a forcer bit, especially if you're doing a box. Um, remembering it will leave a little uh, divot in the bottom which you could easily get rid of with a round nose scraper. Um, not a method I'd ever use on goblets uh, but on a box sometimes it can be a time saver. But however this here is a two and a quarter inch or 57 mil force in a bit. Um, I wouldn't go into even this soft uh, grain 
with that to begin with. If you start off with a smaller hole to give the larger bit less work to do. So I'm starting off here with a, an inch and a quarter and you could actually even uh, go up uh, in between those two sizes before you do the final um, width, uh, the, f the final diameter you're looking for. And again with Forstner bits, um, it's in a Jacobs chuck, it's securely mounted there. Um, because of the, um, the action of rotation, always hold your um, Force, uh, your Jacob's chuck to stop it coming out of the Morse taper, especially when retracting. And you don't need a fast speed. There are recommended speeds for various sizes of Forsen a bit, but I, I tend to find that something around the, the 300, um, 300 revs, 400 revs is more than adequate, and you need to retract the bit often to clear the chips and also to reduce the heat that you create. So again holding the Jacobs chuck firmly, just advance the quill. What I've done, I forgot to mention this, I've made a small divot there just to give the force a bit somewhere to centre before I start to cut wood. And I keep on saying this is really um, not nice wood, but suffice it to say, when you're using a hardwood, you need to be even more mindful of the work the forces that it's got to do. And the last thing you want to do is to heat up the wood. I'm not going to do a complete depth cut, just to show you the start, and this is with the one and a quarter, I'll change the force a bit out now to the two and a quarter and we'll just go down a little bit further. Now I've changed the force a bit out now to the two and a quarter inch or 57 mil bit. I've turned the revs down to about 300 revs and you'll get a feel of whether it's struggling or not. Um, very carefully start your cut. Remove. And you need to feed in really quite slowly. see there that you work your way down to the depth you require and at the bottom you would have the this little divot as I say which is easily removed with a round nose scraper or some such tool so that is another way of um, cutting into end grain to hollow out what I would suggest is there are several types of force a bit out there um, I found in end grain the best ones are the sawtooth for the larger um, diameters for, for sure. Um, the smaller ones without the sawtooth are okay for small holes but then again you'd use a drill bit or an auger bit for that operation. Well I hope some of you find that of some use. It gives you an insight into the various methods you can use uh, when you wish to hollow into end grain whether it be goblets or boxes or sim something similar. There is no definitive way but at least it gives you something uh, to have a bash at and decide what method suits your turning style the best. Don't forget next year, make a central at the NEC in Birmingham on May the 5th and 6th of 2018. Promises to be a fantastic event organised by Nick Zametti of NZ Wood Turning, uh, and I'll put links to Nick's channel and indeed to Make a Central channel on YouTube and website where you can find all the details and um, a description of what you can expect to enjoy when you attend. Okay, well thanks very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Cheers now.